In 17th century India, a princess of Mughal India would have lived within a harem with all the women, all the principal women that were related to her father, all of his wives, various stepmothers, grandmothers, aunts, cousins. And typically, a 17th century princess would, would have some sort of standing in a harem. However, in Shadow Princess, which is the book that we're talking about, uh, Princess Jahanara is the Padsha Begum. She is the chief lady of her father's harem because her mother dies when she's 17 years old. And her mother, Mumtaz Mahal, is the one for whom her father begins to build the Taj Mahal. So Jahanara grows up in the shadow of this great monument that her father builds for her mother. She becomes omnipotent. He grants her event what eventually becomes the largest income for any woman in the Mughal Empire. At court, there were a presence behind a screen. Um, and if you go to the forts and palaces at Delhi and Agra today, you'll see behind this the marble thrones, you'll see a marble latticework screen on either side and that's where the, the women of the Zanana, the women of the harem sat. Nobody actually ever saw them and yet they were the ones who decided who became the next emperor. They were the ones who decided who would be punished and who not punished. Um, Jahanara herself as an imperial princess, as the Pacha Begum of her father's harem, uh, built mosques, she built sarais, which were rest houses for travelers around the empire with her large income. She gave dowries to orphan girls. Still has to struggle because her father, in his grief, leans on her so much as soon as her mother dies that she's not allowed to marry. She falls in love with a noble at court. She has an illicit affair with him because she can't marry him. She struggles to put one of her brothers on the throne and despite all of her power, her money, her influence in the harem and at court, she still doesn't succeed. These were the reasons why these women fascinated me because they were, um, they were women who didn't have the sort of freedoms that the modern women have, uh, not being able to go out, not being able to speak in front of men. And yet they managed to tweak India's history to what they wanted it to be.